She is the co-founder of the Black Voters Matter Fund and currently serves on the board of the National Coalition on Black Civic Participation, the Southern Documentary Fund, the U.S. Human Rights Network, and the Congressional Progressive Caucus Center. She's also the, the star of our Vote Save America training. She pumped up so many people. We were so excited to, to talk to her for our uh, 100 Days Out episode. Please welcome Latasha Brown. How you doing? I'm so happy to be here. Um, we got 100 days, 100 days, work to do. 100 days, 100 days. I can't, I, first of all, how are you feeling right now? You know, these have been a harrowing couple of years. They have culminated in massive protests, a kind of an eruption of feeling of anger, of fear, of sadness, all in the final weeks before something we've said before, but mean <laughs> more than ever, the most important election uh, in our lifetimes. How are you feeling right now? You know, that's a great question. I don't know if you've been feeling this and that, but when you spend a lot of time, you know, in a space and home and being still, you're really reflective. And so I've been really reflective and thinking about where we are as a country. You know, where are we as just a human race? Like, like what, where are we as a people right now? Um, and really thinking about like the legacy of America and been really dreaming around the America that I want to see and America that I want to be a part of. And yeah. as bad as stuff is right now, and I mean, we are, in my opinion, I'm feeling like we are uh, two feet from hell. You know, as bad as things are right now, these are the moments that greatness come for. Like this is the moment, you know, for us to yeah. really be, have the opportunity to create this country to be what we want it to be. Uh, one of the things you, you, you've talked about in terms of how we make sure we go in the in one direction versus the other is, you know, you wrote an op-ed about how Biden needs to appeal to black women in this election. He needs their support. What do you think Biden needs to be doing right now to make sure that at this moment uh, he is saying the right things and projecting the right policies for the future that he can garner the enthusiasm and get the votes he needs? You know, I, I not only do I think he needs the support of black women, Biden needs the leadership and of, of black women. He needs the insight of black women. He needs the fire of black women, right? There is nobody in this country that unequivocally has stood on the front lines of pushing for democracy in the midst of a, a, a white supremacist patriarchy culture, patriarchal culture like black women. We have been consistent. You know, so what I think Biden needs is Biden needs more than the support of black women. And he also needs the leadership, the wisdom, the insight, the strategy that black women bring to the table. And that's why I've been pushing. And there are many of us who have been pushing for him to get a, um, a black woman v VP. And it's, it's, it's not just the optics. It's what our offering. Like people are acting like we haven't. We have always been on the vanguard of democracy in this country. We stood with white women in the women's suffrage movement 100 years ago, even though I, we didn't re secure our rights to 50 years later, right? But we knew the importance of democracy, right? We have, we have been consistent. And so I think, on that, I think on that note, I think there is a particular offering that in an environment that is deeply sexist, that is being led by um, chief misogynists um, of America, and an administration that has been um, very hostile to women and women's issues and not being reflective of, of, of the population, you need someone, the kind of leadership that sits at the intersection of, of, of gender issues and the intersection of race that has a depth of understanding, a knowledge, right? That ultimately we need, just like he, he was able to recognize that there was the moment is calls for the leadership of a woman. I'm also saying that this moment calls for the leadership of a black woman. Can we not recognize that the moment that we're in is that we're in a moment that we need deep racial healing, that we're in a moment that we need, that people need to see reflective democracy? Do we not see that we're in a moment that a black woman, there are plenty of brilliant, well-qualified black women can be in that role? And so I'm just raising that, that, that we also have to come back our own issues of sexism and racism. And so this is the moment, you know, and then his recent comments around, you know, there is, I know he, his recent comments around that Trump is the first racist a president in America. 
Now, perhaps those first slave owners, I guess what, that was just a business deal? I mean, come on, y'all. <laughs> like, come on. Like, give me a break. Right, Theodore Roosevelt. I mean, can't can Andrew Jackson an honorable <laughs> mention or something? It's uh, you don't have to conv- you don't have to convince me. I uh, I I agree. Um, what? All right. So, uh, I want to put you on the spot, and I wasn't actually uh, planning to do this, but um, who do you who do you want? Who's your who's your pick? I'm I'm glad you asked. But guess what? <laughs> I am not going to tell you. Let me tell you why. I knew I'm you not, were. I actually have a position. Not why I'm not. Yeah. Gonna okay. That a part part of is kind of what I was saying earlier. Part of what I think happens is whenever you start saying when when. The, the larger issue for me is that in the last 50 years, the most consistent constituency base that showed up for the Democratic Party has been Black women. Mm-hmm. Yet in 50 years, we have not seen Black women be some, um, selected for the Supreme Court, mm-hmm. nor in the highest positions in this land. It's, it's been a non-starter. Mm-hmm. I, I just, let me just take you back for a minute. What world would white men be the dominant, most consistent base for 50 years and not have representation. Somebody would think of something wrong with the system. Like it would, something would be off, right? Yeah. So the bottom line is the larger issue for me is that there is a representation issue that is mm-hmm. not about finding the super black, like give us which super black so we can decide is she good enough? Like, I think that it goes down that route then what winds up happening, it becomes, this is, has been my position, then it becomes around which one and then measuring her up to whether she's good enough. Let me just say, I have voted for a whole bunch of uh, far with the black women candidates that are out there, their names from Kamala Harris to um, Stacey Abrams, to Susan Rice, to Val Demings, to um, 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 Barbara Lee, to I even put um, uh, uh, Maxine Waters in there, right? Because in any other circumstance, I think she would have been considered right now. My point is of all of those black women, I have voted for far less prepared inferior white men for a whole lot of years and ain't nobody uh-huh. asked me why I was I voted for a white man like which white man so I just so- want to <laughs> I just want you to know that I was putting you on the spot because I knew there was no way you were going to choose amongst so many incredibly right. qualified black women for the record I I I was well aware that there was no chance in hell you were going <laughs> to tell me a pick <laughs> I, I, no way. How, I mean, imagine it. <laughs> yes, yes. So I think, and, and I raise it, and it's not like we all have preferences. So let me get this right. Like, it's all have preferences. Let me just say my candidate was Elizabeth Warren, right? People ask me, I was like, I still think she need to be president, right? But, but there's a recognition <laughs> at this moment of me recognizing what is being called for in this moment. We yeah. are in a moment that race does matter. And we're in a moment that gender does matter. And we're in a moment that people want to see something different. And they want to see the Democratic Party be more reflective of what who makes up the Democratic Party. And so I think there's a real opportunity that exists now. So not just saying a black woman, because that's, you know, it's just we need a black woman. I'm saying that there's a strategic value in bringing a black woman to the ticket based on where the country is. And just because I think black women are so damn smart and fly, I think there's other value of bringing some of these amazing black women who have a demonstrated path of leadership um, that they can actually bring some offering that has literally for years been shut out because of race and gender. You have, I do feel like those paths have not been because there wasn't a qualified black woman, but it's because we have not been considered because we have not effectively dealt with race and gender in America. So uh, to that point, you know, uh, one of the people on that list is Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams would be governor of Georgia right now, but for voter suppression efforts, uh, uh, racism and misogyny. It's just to me, it's 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 incredibly clear in the wake of the passing of of John Lewis. There's been a revived conversation around uh, restoring the Voting Rights Act, naming it for John Lewis. Uh, what do you think about that effort? And right now, it's being blocked by uh, Mitch McConnell in the Senate. Uh, what is your What is your view on the best thing we should be doing right now uh, to uh, to to get that passed, whether it's now or uh, early next year? Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody. Turn me around, I'm gonna keep on walking, 
keep on the talking, marching up to freedom's land. I want to stay with that because I think it's the spirit of that song and the spirit of that movement of where we are now. I think part of what has happened is that we believe that democracy can just be shaped by some people creating some policy. America wasn't even founded like that. Matter of fact, America was founded out of protest. It was a Boston Tea Party. It wasn't like that they were down there discussing, well, let's have a policy meeting. No, they threw tea out because they were not gonna pay those taxes. My point is the spirit of citizens, when people rise up, right? When people rise up and say and demand something different, policy, reflective leadership, a, a more representative government, that's when things are gonna change. So when, I, when you're asking about what we should do now, I think there's a couple of things. I think one, I think we need to increase people power. How do you do that? Organize, 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 organize. And so I think organizations that are doing pro-democracy work on the ground, everybody should have a political home. People should be writing checks. We should be supporting those groups that are on the front lines of doing the change. Because I don't think that right now the Department of Justice that we have is going to protect democracy or this administration. We're going, as, as the people, we're going to have to demand that, which is why I love what is happening in Portland and all over this country. So one, I think that we've got to really commit ourselves to this pro-democracy movement. Two, I also think that we've got to push for more, for policies that ensure that voters have rights. Like I believe that, that there's a HERO Act, there's, there's a HERO Act that is in right now. There is a movement for there to be a bill a voting rights bill that restores the Voting Rights Act named after John Lewis and has some additional provisions, we should do that immediately. Just on GP, yeah. that, that should just happen right now, <laughs> right? Yeah. I actually have, because I think of myself as a black futurist and I, have, and I believe that in order for America to shift, you have to have a radical reimagining. Let's be honest, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, even at that time was a compromise. I, it did go far enough, even it, as it was written at that moment. And so now I think we need going into this next phase of democracy. If we haven't seen anything else, we should know that there, the fragility of democracy is dangerous. It will allow a fascist. People would say, five years ago, people would say, oh, you can't have fascism in America. What you feel about that now? Right? <laughs> like people yeah. are snatching folks up off the streets and yeah, it's in bands, unmarked bands. And it's fascism. You know, I look, I understand people who are reluctant to use that word, but but fascism doesn't have to succeed to completely to call it fascism. It's fascism all the way to the final I destination. It's fascism as they're destroying democracy and it's fascism once democracy is gone. It's fascism right now. And it's OK to use that word, I think. It is OK to use that word because, you know, when you see a thing happen, mm -hmm. Right, you've got to call that thing out so that you can stop it, so that people can recognize this isn't just ordinary politics, you know, as usual, that we are in a different era and there's a different danger. But aside from that, that we can actually see the holes of democracy in America and stop uh, hiding behind this idea that America is without fallacy. That the truth of the matter is, the um, democracy can be strengthened in this country if we strengthen the laws to provide protection for voters. And so one, I want to see, just like we have a Department of Defense, uh, the Department of Defense supposed to be in place to protect the democracy and the sovereignty of America. I want to see a Department of Voting Rights. I want to see a Department of Democracy. I love that idea. That's so cool. I've never heard that before. Well, that's Department of Democracy. That's right. The, 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 the Department making, of Democracy. I'm into it. I'm into it. Um, <laughs> I guess this is where I, I wanted to end because you're... I think it's easy to say, OK, the answer to them taking away democracy is more democracy to show up, to show up. But, you know, I want to sort of end where we started, which is, you know, people are exhausted. People are angry. People are, are sad. People are dealing with this pandemic. People are dealing with incredible economic loss. There are people that are dealing with voter suppression and with the fear of not only having to uh, uh, figure out how to make sure they're not cast off the uh, off the rolls, but figuring out if they can vote remotely or vote safely. What is your message to people out there who feel that, right? We're in the we're in the home stretch, there's a hundred days left. What is your message to people to make sure they understand that we have to like push through this no matter what happens? So what I would say is that black people have been voting for re for enfranchisement in this country um for over two hundred years. So I'm just saying, at the end of the day, I hear you being tired, but I mean 
just kind of imagine I'm from Alabama. I'm a black woman from Alabama. I'm tired too. So I understand that, right? And I understand that it is, and I don't want to minimize or um, marginalize that this is a really difficult moment for us. But the truth of the matter is a couple of things. What choice do we have? That yeah. in this moment, that if we're if we really if we lose the protections that actually value us as citizens, if we use the protections that allow us to participate in our in our country and decisions made with us, that all this that we think we're tired now, imagine what we will be later. And so part of it it is that's why with you know part of our work is as we're doing this work that is hard and feels traumatic, we've got to create a little joy. We got to bring some love in the world. And so in this process, we've got to build ourselves as a nation from the inside out. What does that mean? That here we are in a moment that we have seen the largest multiracial, multigenerational uprising in all 50 states in this country. We've got to lean into that. Do you know how much possibility and potential comes with that? That's America. That is America. And so this is the moment for us not to get so focused on Trump, right? I mean, he got to go. Like, he's got to go. Like, he's got to go. He's got to go. Again. He got to go. Right. He's got to go. Right. But, but ultimately, more so than he has to go, the question is, what will we replace all of this with? And so it is not, this is beyond Biden. This election cycle can't be about Biden. This election cycle has to be around, as he says, redeeming the soul of America, but shaping the America that we all envision, the America that really puts human life and human value, the America that says we're going to have what's top of the list is not how well the stock market is doing, but how well her people are doing. That's how yeah. we measure success, right? And so that's what I think. I think we're in this moment that we should be deeply reflective around how are we going to contribute to the founding of the next phase of the new America, that America that I want to be a part of and that I dream about. I believe that is possible. Thank you.